Good morning, everybody. My name is Deborah Byrne from uh, Deborah Byrne Psychology Services and uh, known as DB Psychology across social uh, social media. Uh, this morning's talk is going to be on uh, restarting your life after being a caregiver. Um, that could be that you were looking after elderly parents. You could be looking. You could have been looking after a child. Um, it also would include people that actually are caregivers for. Um, professionally that they would go in uh, it could be somebody who's a nurse who you know could work with cancer patients or anybody in particular that has worked as a carer and um, and now that role has ceased um and they want to move on with their lives so the there's a number of tips i'm going to talk about this morning uh, in regard to this so the first thing I want to do to say to you is if you have lost a family member, I'm really sorry. And my condolences to you and your family. Um, the first six months at the very least after somebody do has died, you're going to be have entered into uh, the grieving period, as people say. Um, and your emotions are going to be up and down uh, all over the place. Uh, it's a roller coaster for at least six months. Now, in saying six months, um, it, grief doesn't have a set timeline. It doesn't have a set period. OK, um, what's you know, what lasts for six months for one person may last for a lot longer for somebody else. And why I bring that up is to say to you, never, ever, ever make a big decision. During that first six months, at least six months, I would possibly say give yourself at least a year. Um, and that includes, you know, sale, sale of the ha the home and um, maybe even returning to work, or, you know, changing your career, doing something else. Give yourself that time. You've you've done this um, job and it's, it's not really a job. It's, it, you know, you love that person and you've spent time with them um you've looked after all their needs. You need time now for you. You really do. You need you need to take at least six months for yourself. Um, that'll bring me on to my next point. Um, you're going to feel a sense of um, a sense of, of loss in terms of your identity and your role, particularly if you are a full time carer. Um, as a full time carer, you're going to have uh, built up this identity or part of your identity will have built up around this idea that you're a carer and you looked after somebody. So when you lose that role and um, it's the same as losing a job or, you know, losing uh, some other part of yourself or changing even into becoming a parent or maybe making that adjustment when you finally leave home. It's a big life change. It's a big identity crisis change. And again, you're going to need time to come to terms with that. And through all that, you're also going to be, you know, dealing with the grieving, with grieving and um, all those emotions that come with grieving. Um, I would also suggest that you may, if you have been uh, looking after somebody, the other thing that can be hard for you is that you could have built up stress in your body, um, built up a lot of emotions, a very, you know, a very strong emotions that you've had to keep suppressed while living, uh, while living on and uh, you're going to, you know, it's going to um, then be a time of maybe collapse for you after that person has died and after the initial few months um, um, of grieving. That will have built up in your body and now it's got, you know, it's not something you are going to be. You're not living in that, that high stress environment anymore. So looking at ways to reduce your stress um and good morning jennifer and there was somebody else before that was watching i i don't know who i can't remember who it was um but good morning to everybody that's watching this morning so the high stress anyway in your in your body um you need to find ways of alleviating that so you may even need to uh go and see your gp um a lot of people who have been looking after somebody else will neglect their own medical needs will ne ne neglect their own mental health and they will neglect their own you know dentistry and things like that now is the time to actually go and get all those things sorted so if you've had um 
uh, you know, if you have been putting things on the long finger and you do need to um, get your, you know, physically checked out, um, then I would suggest now is the time to actually go and do it. Now is the time to start investing in self-care, in other words. Um, reducing your stress level, taking up meditation, having a look at your diet, exercising. It's now time to invest in you. You've invested all these years in, in looking after somebody else. It's now time to invest in you. And in saying that, um, when you become a carer, you can get very isolated. You know, the person that you're looking after becomes your sole focus, everything and meeting all their needs and, and, and having to look after them. And even maybe that they are, their friends are coming to see them, but you're losing your friends. Maybe you your age group, it was particularly if it's an elderly par parent that you were looking at, you can be very isolated. And you start friends. Um, so my suggestion for making new friends would be to actually start reconnecting uh, with old friends. Um, hopefully you haven't let that go. Um, you know, there might be one or two people that you have kept in touch with. Start building up, start meeting them on a regular basis, at least once a week. Um, get them to introduce you to other people that they know and, and go with them. Go with them to things so that you don't feel I'm, I'm on my own here and I'm trying something new for the first time. You have somebody with you that is, um, you know, that, is, that, that has already been there or that you, you know, a friend that's with you that can try this new thing with you. Um, you know, night classes, taking up new hobbies, uh, new interests, uh, new groups, join new groups, anything like that. All of this is, is a way of um, incorporating um, a new lifestyle, but it's also to help reduce isolation and loneliness. Um, the other thing that you might want to, to think about um and I said to you not to make any big decisions in the first six months, you know, six months to a year, don't make any big decisions, is thinking about uh, going back to work. If you're, if you're of, you know, if you're under the working age, um, you know, 65, 66, I think it's going up now to about 67, 68. But if you're under that age group, and even if you aren't, if even if you are older, think about maybe looking at, uh, you know, maybe working Going back to work, maybe retraining, going to college, it's never too late. Um, doing, you know, maybe even working part time. Or the other thing you can try is volunteering. That dips your toe back in the water in terms of work volunteering. Um, there are many charities that have shops even that would be glad of a day, one day a week that you would volunteer for them. There are many groups on and work with children. Um, you know, that are glad to have people that will come and work with them on a volunteer basis. It gives you the idea of, you know, putting a bit of structure in your day, working with somebody um, and then, um, but, you know, it's not a paid role. So you maybe feel you aren't as committed. Um, but though I have to say, you know, doing volunteer work is wonderful. Absolutely. As you get more out of it um, than you'll ever have to put, you know, that you ever have to put in. Um, again, as I said earlier, um, it's about uh, reducing your isolation and your loneliness. And the last thing I would suggest you do is to try something new at least once a month. And this isn't just for carers or somebody who's restarting their life for, for whatever reason. Trying something new once a month is a really good way of uh, taking you out of your comfort zone and um, exposing your vulnerability and, um, you know, helping you overcome your fears. Um, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be a simple thing as if, if you like uh, uh, Zumba, say, then take a yoga class. It, it doesn't have to be big. Um, I have a whole load of um, self-care, self-soothing or good habits um, lists of six lists of things that you can do if you go in and put in the word self-soothing into my blog in the search section of my uh, my website and go in there and have a look and there's a list of six things six lists that you can actually try all different things that you can actually try and you know give it a go you have nothing to lose you're only trying it once 
Um, the people in the group, well, you know, possibly don't know you or they won't mind, you know. Um, stay down the back if you feel like you're going to make a fool of yourself. Um, but just put yourself out there. It's good. It actually is good to get out there and meet people. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, the blog is at www.debrabarnpsychologyservices.com. Uh, good morning, Kim, and thank you for listening in. And um, check it out. Um, see what you can, you know, there's any suggestions you have for other people to try or anything you found as a carer and you were starting your life again. If there's anything you want to, to, you know, suggestions you would make to other people, post them below, um, below under this blog, under this blog and, um, and, and, you know, let's start a conversation. Um, so I hope you, you will, you will join me next week. Um, and it'll be about 10 o'clock, around 10 o'clock, between 10 and half 10 on a Wednesday when I usually do my, my Facebook lives. So uh, I'll say good morning to everybody and have a great